In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a GUI which allows you to spawn parts into the game to non-experimental mode so that your game can be compatible with filtering enabled. Let's get started. Okay, so in the recent weeks, Roblox has added a new change which means that nobody can play games which are filtering enabled turned off, which means experimental mode on. So now developers need to start making their games filtering enabled. So I'm going to start making some videos which shows you how to convert uh, things in your game which probably are broken, uh, which or are restricting your game from uh, being uh, non-experimental. Uh, so today, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be converting this GUI right here, which allows you to spawn a part, we're going to be converting it to filtering enabled. So if we go and play it right now, what happens is when I go and click this button, it spawns randomly coloured parts into the game. Now this works fine, but in a filtering enabled uh, game, so if this game had filtering enabled turned on, I'd, I would only be able to see this change. No one else in the game would be able to see it. And so the game kind of gets broken. So we need to uh, convert this game to filtering enabled so that everyone can see the parts which I spawn in and that no one else can do malicious uh, things to the game. So let's go into our local script and I'm just going to show you what I've made. So I've got a, a little event here uh, which will run whenever I click the button and it just creates a new part in the workspace uh, and gives it some properties as well. Uh, describes it a little bit. So we want to insert this part into the workspace but we need to do this on the server. We can't do it on the client because the server uh, will not replicate any changes made uh, to the rest of the clients. So we need to uh, do this change on the server so that everyone else can see the new parts being added because at the moment only I will be able to see this change because I am the person executing the code uh, and, and the parts are being created on my end. So to do this we're going to insert a remote event into replicated storage. So let's just go and insert that in now and let's just give it a name called part create. Okay and I'm just going to want to go into the into server script service and put a script in here as well. This is where the parts are going to be created and what's going to happen is we're going to make a request to this remote event from the local script and we're going to tell it that we want to insert a part into the game and then this script here on the server is going to listen out for a call to that remote event and when it gets triggered by the local script what's going to happen is the remote event is going to tell the script to execute the code and the code will be to insert a new part. So let's go into our script and let's just create our event for when this remote event gets triggered because the, the local script on the client will be firing off this remote event and the server script which is in server script service will be listening out for this request to make the part and then we will be able to make it once once that request has been fired. So to do this we're going to say game.replicatedStorage and then we're going to get the name of our remote event which is part create and then we're going to say dot on server event so when there's been an event on the server when it's been triggered we're going to say colon connect and pair parenthesis and we can say function and another pair inside of here there we go and just drop a line so that we've got end and we've got our closing bracket on the end so inside of here any code inside of this event will run when the remote event is fired by the local script. Okay, so we're going to have our code to create the part inside of this server script. So let's go and just copy this out of the local script into the server script. Okay, there we go. And what we're going to want to do now is head back to our local script because we want to detect uh, when the player clicks the button and then we need to fire the remote event uh, once it's been clicked. 
So inside of this event, the activated event, when the button is clicked, any code inside of this event will run. What we want to do is we want to fire the remote event. Okay. So to do this, it's quite simple. We just have to say game.replicated storage. And we're getting the remote event again, part create. And then what we want to do is we want to fire, curl on fire server. And what this will do is it will fire off the trigger uh, to anything which is listening out for it. So you can have multiple scripts listening out, listening out for a call from this remote event. And then when there is a server event, we've just fired the server event. Uh, when that does get fired, the code inside of here will run and the part will be created. So let's go and give our code a test. Let's go and run out the game. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, run this in a uh, in a server, in a test server, so that we can see the, uh, the game from two different players' perspectives. Uh, and we'll have filtering enabled turned on as well in workspace. And let's go and load up this test server. So we've loaded up the game here in a test server, and this is what it would be like in a real Roblox game with uh, filtering enabled turned on. So in a, if filtering enabled was turned off, anyone would be able to insert the parts and we wouldn't have needed to do the changes we just made. But now, now that we have got filtering enabled turned on, if we hadn't have just made the changes which we just did uh, with the remote event and the server script, the player who clicks the button would only have been able to see the part for themselves. But now that we have made this game compatible with filtering enabled by using remote events to uh, send the trigger from the local script to the server script, which creates the part on the server so that everyone can see it, if we click on the button, on player 2 who is on the left, player 1 is on the right. If we click the button and we fire it from player 2, player 1 on the right should be able to see the part being added. And there it is, so you can see the part was added on each player's uh, client, or well, it was added to the server and it got replicated to each client so everyone was able to see it. And so now instead of just one person uh, being able to see the change, uh, everyone in the server will be able to see and interact with the part which has just been added. Now let me show you what this would have been like if we just didn't make the changes we just did, but if we kept filtering enabled turned on. So here we are, we're in the same test server again, but this time filtering enabled is still on, but I've just reverted the changes we've just made and the part is being created in the local script what it, and that's what it looked like at the start so there's no remote events there's no server scripts controlling any of this the part is being created on the client in that local script so this means that if the player if player 2 on the left clicks this button the part will be created for them but for player 1 and everyone else in the game there's no part there and this is because the part what happened was the the player player two on the left clicked this button and the client his client his or her client said to the server i want to add a new part into the game and because we've got filtering enabled on which prevents the client talking to the server and making changes the server said no i'm not going to add this part into your game i'm not sorry i'm not going to add the part into the server um, so it will only be added on. It will be on, it will only be visible to you on the client, but you could be doing something malicious. So I'm going to block this request. So it's only been added to the client who clicked the button. Okay, so it's only on their it's only on their game. It's only on their screen uh, because it's 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 locally on their client. However, for the other players, because what happens when the client makes a change, what would usually happen is the change goes to the server and the server replicates that change to all the clients. Uh, because the server has blocked that request, it's not going to be replicated to anyone else, so no one else will be able to see the part being added, only the player who clicked the button. Hence why player 2 cannot see it. So if we move player 2 over here, you can see player 2, he, he's, he's moving, and you see on, on player 1's screen, so on player 2 screen on, on the left, you can see that player 1 on the right, he is actually uh, pushing. 
he's pushing the uh, the brick but on the right screen or uh, on player one he's not actually pushing anything to him because there's no there's no uh, block there um, so the the illusion is only there for player two on the left because uh, it's lo the, the part is locally on their client and only they can see it. So that was a little tutorial on how to convert uh, GUI uh, buttons which spawn parts or uh, make changes to parts on the server. You have to use remote events if you're calling them from the client. Uh, so I hope this helped you. If it did, please leave a like, uh, subscribe. And if you are having troubles with experimental mode, you want to make your game filtering enabled compatible, but you, something stopping it from happening, let me know what you want me to cover next in this series because I'm going to be doing lots of videos on how to correct issues which are uh, arising from experimental mode. Uh, so if something's not working for you, uh, because of this new change then do let me know in the comment section below and I will try my hardest to make a video on it So this has been me Alvin blocks. If you enjoyed the video, please like make sure to subscribe turn on the notification bell And this is me telling you to keep scripting